Starting from the beginning, I wanted to use different sounds, so I started recording my own drum sounds because anything can be turned into anything. Producers use synths, and most of them come from software that has stock synths. Everyone ends up using the same sounds. You can always say that songs have the same melody or chord progressions. That's never been a problem because that's pop music in general. But the fact that people use the same instrument patch every time has always frustrated me. There's no studio fees. I don't have to pay for anything when I make any song, regardless of whether it's a throwaway beat I just throw on SoundCloud or if I give it to the roots. I'm going by like the oldest piano and also I wanted the most expensive piano. Mm -hmm. The most expensive one I could find is $90,000. Why is it $90,000? Well, because it's does it sound the best? It's gonna sound as good as any other, like my free piano, but you just it'll want just be... the novelty of the expensive. Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name's Nick. 
Um, I'm interested in the Steinway Contra Grand Piano Model D you guys are advertising on Craigslist. Sure. Are you a pianist yourself, or should I have a back and get somebody who can play it for you and that kind of thing? Yeah, I know I know how to, to use one. Tell me what the studio is. Uh, it's, it hasn't been founded yet. That's why we're, we're shopping around. Uh, we have a budget for um, instruments and stuff. You have a budget for a Contra Grand Piano? For, yeah, for sure. How'd I do? I'm convincing him. Music is totally changing, and people need to understand that instruments are cool, and I, I definitely mess with them, and I love them, and they're, they're cool to practice on, but they're novelties. The entire universe is full of sound, big and small, so all of these things that we record can be anything. Say again? We're checking out from, yeah. Ah, oh, what is he doing? Uh, he's opening a studio. I see. Downtown. Recording studio? Yeah. I see. And we need a, a, a really a nice centerpiece. So, you know. What's his name? John. Most instruments were just vehicles to communicate a melody in the loudest way possible. All that changed with amplification and recorded sound. And so for the first hundred years of the recording industry, people were like, oh, well, we can record all these instruments that we've had for centuries, and then we can listen to it anywhere else. But why do we need those instruments anymore? The first instrument, a drum, was made just because it was the loudest way to communicate. In Africa, they used to communicate between villages and, and signal each other. So I love drums, but there's no point to them anymore. You don't let Questlove hear that. This is the one I worked on. I started this last night. Um, it's kind of crazy on the drums, though. I mean, it's crazy with like all the like different drums in the background. Yeah, no, I like it. It might be too cluttered to rap over. I think I could. I yeah. Like, I kind of like that one or the dots one. If you, I would rap on that if you wanted to add more to it later. Yeah, that's probably what I do is like clean yeah. it up. Hello. 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 Yeah. All right. Here we go. All right. So that's it. Whoa. So, and then you can play these like keys. <laughs> that's amazing. You can go in whenever you want. Peep the sensuality dot of my ambiance. Gravitas from the top to the ID dots. Try to photocopy the photograph. You don't know the hive. Don't go to pot if you don't know the mod. 
Sometimes I spit powders that folded my soul in half and lie. As I sit from a golden piano, gravitized from the top to the eye you die. You don't know the high. Don't go to pie, cause you don't know the mind. The stolen pie finder, tipping glass, trying to reach behind the eyes and touch the vagina. My bad, I'm clowning his son tape. Problems and drown them in rum. That sounds Ginger cool. Ale, cool. <laughs> yeah. Ties from the top to the eye you die. Try to blow the pie, we go to fly. You don't know the high. When I listen to my songs, I just remember being there the same way a photo will help you remember where you were when you took that photo. You can take a stock synth and play with knobs and, and like tweak it, but you can't replicate drums that I recorded in Times Square at 2 a.m. when a, a cab was honking and someone was throwing up 10 feet away from me. It's gonna sound like nothing else. So singer too big to fail, oceanic, I'm Shamu, the killer whale, marine world. Splash, 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 I'm a dolphin. Big and pot mix in the cauldron with Leonard Maltin. Nah, it don't halt. <laughs> Man, fuck with three women like Robert Altman. Wrote this on the train ride over here on an iPhone. Just, just, just like I was Rick Ross or something. What are you gonna wear? What? What are you gonna wear? Um, sweatpants and uh, uh, my varsity, my white varsity hat broken in, and those Adidas flip flops that have the things on them with socks. Do you have those? And a raincoat. Wait, so you said this is a fashion party, so I should dress like high fashion, like really cool stuff. Like, How many times? <laughs> it's not the same joke if it's different clothes every time. It's the same joke. It's like, <laughs> I did want to quit my Tumblr last week because there was a person that was like harassing like me and Nick and causing like problems between us. If it's gonna threaten like my relationships, that's when it should stop. But then it was like my album was about to come out, just it wasn't, a, it wasn't a good time to stop using my Tumblr or else everything I worked for would like, it wouldn't reach my audience, you know? You know I don't like talking to people. That's why I said let's sit down and have a very in-depth conversation where no one else is invited. You can't do that. You have to look like you're interested. You're asleep on this muffin. That's a cupcake, dumbass. There's frosting. We're gonna punch this cupcake. <laughs> I mean, living with someone definitely is always an issue. Well, that's pretty. Especially because I can spend like 10 hours working on one song without like taking a break, forgetting that I'm even working.
So basically, I just want to record the silence in a bunch of, I guess, tragic rooms. The silence in a, a room that's completely empty is different than the silence of a room with 20 people in it and a dead body. I kind of like probably say like that I was doing a project for school. Okay. And then they would probably be a little more lenient, like if it's a student rather than just a... That's true. And just say that if there's any way we could record just like the presence of, of like dead people in the room. Hi, have I reached the um, New Jersey, Newark, Essex County morgue? Yeah. Um, is there any way, uh, we're doing an art project for school and we wanted to uh, record and uh, film uh, the room tone of a morgue. Is that possible? Um, I'm not really sure when we'll be able to do something like that. No, 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 not the room sizes, the room silence, like the, like the quiet, like no sound. There's like a certain tone of the room that, that they're- Well, every, every family is so different in the way they react to death. Um, some are very noisy, noisy some are celebratory, some, you know, not jumping for joy, but relieved that their loved one has, you know, there is no norm, I would say. Okay. That's what you would want to explore. Yeah, that's what we kind of want to explore, how, how every family is very, very different. So, do you think it's possible that we are able to record? No, absolutely not. Not during a family funeral, no. Okay. It's strictly private. Okay, well, there are more. What are you going to tell the people whose funerals you're going to record? I'm not going to talk to them. I'm just kidding. That's why I need interns, so that they can talk for them to them. Or if you want to do it. Well, no, I don't want any part of that. See? But you don't want me to have interns. I don't not want you to have interns. I just think you should find somebody who you know that's not a crazy 16-year-old girl who wants to rape you. Damn. I don't know, I've had a bit more time. Uh, me and Kitty broke up. Uh, and... So I guess I have a, a more time in this whole place to myself to work on stuff. It just started getting... Uh, I guess toxic for both of us, I feel like. Well, at South by, we got in a big fight. He stayed awake all night, but then like when we left the hotel, we like we had to check out because it was like the last day of South by. And I had a show, so he was like all tired and stuff and he didn't know what to do. So he went and slept under an overpass. <laughs> recorded the sounds underneath the overpass and made a song out of it and then put it on his blog and it got all sorts of all sorts of notes anytime we would wake up and log on to the internet both of us would get like 15 marriage proposals from like complete strangers it's easy to read those things when we're in the same room and we've been inseparable for two weeks straight and be like oh i guess nick isn't sleeping with someone in arizona which he's never even been to those things are, are things we, you can monitor, but when, when things are happening on tour, it's just really nerve-wracking and, and it just consumed both of us. Like, I'm about to go on a bigger tour. That's a scary one because that's the one where I'm opening for Danny Brown every night. And he's like selling out shows and it's like really big venues. So I'm like, oh my God, there's gonna be 1,500 people that don't really care that I'm there at all. It's 
Check, check, check. Talking. So loud. Okay. Did you keep talking? Sorry. <laughs> what? Wait, what'd you say? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. No, that's how it always is. I just, uh, I just can't, I don't know what else to say. Honestly, recording sounds is the closest I have to having control over anything in life. It's always been reassuring that I can record something and then listen back to it. I'm literally playing with the universe and molding it to my liking. So that's why I do it. It's uh, a sense of ownership and control. Your mom knows I'm coming? He's dealing with some of the same annoying things I am, so. He's trying to lay low. He's outside of the city, so. Yeah, my mom knows it's good. I told her to put some stuff for the pressure cooker, so that would make cool sounds. He kind of regressed to being like, a uh, high schooler again. His mom makes him food. He just chills in his room. Like, I bet she does his laundry. He's just being a spoiled teenager again. You don't have a... a, a Knicks poster on the wall? No, I don't have, like, childhood, like, posters, no. I have a disco dancer. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. It's so good. That yeah. song was, I am a disco dancer. Pum, pum, pum. Yeah, man. You think I've got a Oh yeah, my mom said you should get the sound of the open front. Oh, I've got an ear for this stuff too, man. Yeah, she was just a Does she want me on the track? Yeah, she can cry on the track. No one was really recording on their own till the 70s, and you had to be a maniac because it cost so much money. All the books you read about how you have to record a bass or how you have to EQ something, that all came from people that want to give you a guideline so that you don't mess up or, or break it, but there, there really are no rules. The people that wrote the rules are just playing it safe. We pointing pistols at the cops and shit Until they stop the fucking stop and frisk Motherfuckers know the fucking bop to this Talk some shit, sit back, collect some guap to it I was bred in Queens I collect my bread in Brooklyn with the team It's him, he me, Hollywood heems Won't stop till I collect Bollywood cream You have another verse? You think you can do another verse? Yeah, of course Heemy spit it for the richest to the poorest man. He the purest man. Duran, Duran, wolf spirit, blood of the lamb. You will waste the space your face like George Mirrison. The sonic shamanic, he prone to vomit. He go a wall, see a wall, and vomit. Murder any song if he on it. Demonic, scotch and whiskey, me no drink, no gin and tonic. And mantra right gnarly till I'm farly, you see. Same future as the dog and Marley and me. 
Or the CIA take me out like Marley or G. My will say to bury me with barley and wheat. Okay. I'm going on tour in Europe uh, in like two weeks. Oh yeah? Oh, damn, man. I basically just wanted to go to Paris because I all this like drama was happening around here and so. Yeah, that's, I know. Yeah, yeah I so I just. See right after, like, yeah. Break. It's weird, this is the first time I've been in Paris where I don't miss anyone. Generally when I'm here, as soon as I go through an experience, I feel like telling my friends back home about it. Not in a mopey way, but I don't even know who my friends back home are really at this point. Like everyone I'm friends with is on a professional level too. And I didn't realize it till I left New York, but you don't realize how superficial all those friendships are but as soon as you're out of the picture you're easily and quickly replaced by anyone else that those people are working with or whatever and i'm guilty of that just as much as anyone else is in new york like i don't miss new york for once well this is my grandma my grandparents apartment I keep saying grandma's because my grandpa died when I was really young, so I like forget that this was obviously both of theirs. But anytime I'd come to visit Paris, we'd come here. I know that the artwork on the walls is pretty somber. There's the entire Marquis de Sade collection, leather bound and gold leaf. Both my grandparents went through the Holocaust, so Maybe that influenced their aesthetic. Any of my whole one? They're all like half skulls. Oh, this one's pretty. There's 
so gross. All of you guys. I can't tell which one of you is my favorite. Wow, you look pretty. You're pretty. A lot of my influences post-1990, I'd say, are rap producers, and almost all of them sample. So I feel weird disparaging everything they do. But I think maybe that era is over. That's the coolest organ I've seen. Look how giant that is. And then they let these idiots play it, uh, like, every night, because they play the same four songs. But, like, no one ever plays. Uh, like, Eve's Who's That Girl, or any Rough Riders, frankly. I don't think any Rough Rider track, any Dame of Grease beats have ever been played in Notre Dame. So that's a pity. This is my grandma's coat. I'm gonna visit her. So maybe I'll just wear a coat so she can see that we're still balling. My grandpa died when I was like seven or eight. The thing is he never spoke English. He never like learned English. And it was weird because that's my first language. At the end of his life he was still like learning languages and he was watching this really cheesy instructional video to teach French people English. So it was a guy doing like the Titanic pose, um, looking over a bridge, and then he was like, I can fly, I can fly. And then all I remember was my grandpa laughing, looking at me and being like, I can fly, which that was the first time I even heard him attempt to say any word in English. And it was just really scary, but it was also like, I was like, whoa, he's speaking English now. He's gonna speak English forever. Um, and that was the last time I saw him. Salut papi, salut mamie, c'est Nicolas. Euh, je voulais juste dire bonjour. J'espère que tu vas bien. Regarde mamie, j'ai euh, tout mon dos. Tu me vas bien. Vous me manquez. A euh, bientôt. That's me brushing off my family tomb.
some people rely on humanity too heavily. I love people, but I'm also aware that they're all kind of dumb. I'm also aware that there are other things on this earth and humans are just a kind of animal. international s'il vous plaît c'est euh, en fait je sais pas c'est euh, vers vers non vous connaissez mmh. d'accord <rire> merci I'm tired so both my parent my grandparents um are were Polish and during the Holocaust their entire families were ruined by World War II and the concentration camps. They would never really mention it. Like they, since they had gone through it and they lived through it, it wasn't something that they dwelled on. Like my grandma would rather complain about the air conditioning in a restaurant than ever talk about how her sister was murdered in front of her or how she lost literally everyone in her family and stuff like that. My grandpa was, was married and had a, a child. And when they separate, at the uh, gates of a concentration camp, they separate the men from the women from the children. And his wife wouldn't let go of her ch newborn child and of their child. And so they immediately sent her to a chamber and, and killed her and the baby. And his whole story was was super long and, and mythical in, in what he had to deal with. So it's weird, when I look back at it, I def it definitely makes me feel like the most worthless piece of shit ever, because I'm, I can find, I can complain about anything in the world at all times. And my grandpa had to eat frozen tree roots in the Uzbekistani tundra for a bunch of months while not like, with no one left in his life. I see, you see? Cool. Oh, wow, this is popping. Oh, shit. I've played just as many shows without anyone there as I have shows that are crowded at this point. I mean, it's super fun when there's a lot of people and they're enjoying it, but I guess I'm just jaded by the internet. I can post a photo of me doing something silly it'll have more notes than, than there could be people at that entire venue. I care less and less about the industry side of all of this stuff. The most rewarding thing is when someone tells you that they've listened to your stuff so many times that it changed them or it's the only thing that helps them go to a, a special place.
I'm peeing an M&M. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you. Perfect. No, what'd she say? First door on the left? This isn't it. This can't be it. No, this is a medical, medical building. Alright, where is this? This is nice. It's this one, right? Oh, uh, yes, yes. I can feel the magic already. <laughs> Wait, no, these are going up. Well, we're going to 37. 32. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Is that him? No, I'm sick. This looks like a doctor's office. Oh, great. Maybe there's another door. You find what's in this okay? Uh, it was, yeah, it was really easy. Oh, great, okay. A lot of people get lost in this door. Nah, not, not, no, no, not, not, not. This is room uh, 3420, oh, the Fulcher Hall. This was the first site on the ARPANET. It was called the Network Measurement Center. So once they got a few nodes linked together, it was here that they did a whole bunch of measurements and testing, because no one knew how one of these networks would behave. And it was through that thing that they did it. Well, it's pretty easy. There's a run button. Yeah, that's button. all you do. Okay. Just press run. Yeah. The box is just holding one but, tiny iPhone. Yeah, exactly. Uh, here's people working on the systems. Uh, you've got some kind of world strategy kind of uh, magic game they're playing over there. This is uh, the fearless leader, Leonard Kleinrock, uh, sporting a... I saw short, his picture. Yeah, a short sleeve turtleneck. Yeah, beautiful. I like that. Yeah, beautiful turtleneck. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to disappear and you okay, can cool. do whatever you want. Well, thanks for the tour. Yeah, yeah no really problem. Cool. Thank you. You know where I am. Yeah. Okay, thanks so much. Cool. Thank See you. Yeah. And I'll start because of this room. Okay. And it's All crazy. Stuff. Here yeah. is the internet. This is where this is where a guy typed to some other, well, had his pants down, sitting at this thing, and was like, hey, send me a nude. Which, What's up, dude? And then it came here. Can I see with the letter C your boobs with zeros? Obviously. Now we wait. I can't tell if this is a button or. I think oh. It's Ooh. Did you break it? No, but. When I started recording The Silence of Rooms, I suggested that each room had its own distinct and powerful room tone that was recognizable. And it's silly to think, oh, there's nothing going on. It's silent. There's nothing there. We're hearing something. It's just that we're not paying attention to it. So I've been recording all these silences, and I wanted to get the silence of meaningful locations uh, to compare them to see if one place felt different than the other even if they're not like familiar to me, to see if, if there was like a, a mood shift of some sort. Face, face? I know how to do. Well, Shelby's cool. I mean, she's cool. She's really nice. I don't know. She's like lighthearted and seems to avoid trauma, which is fun. Yeah, that's it. You're getting it. I'm getting it. All right.
luck against mountain. Okay, scream as loud as you can and try to hold the same note. Excuse me? Do you wanna... Can you listen to my music afterwards? No, I can't. Piece of shit. What do you wanna do after this? Um, can you drive me to... I'm supposed to pick up these firecrackers from this guy I found on the internet. He's like a party club for like birthday parties and stuff. And he seems really chill and he just wants to get rid of them. So, and then we can go light them somewhere. Light them up, you record it? 
There's a school next to where I'm staying. We could just break in and set him up in the gym or something. Okay. I'll show you his thing. Okay. He's really chill. He's like, he's just a, a there's like clip art and. And we'll find a place to blow him up. Yeah, he's just like. Oh, that my... picture is creepy. Keep going. Yeah, so you say he's in a Volvo. Mm -hmm. mm, no, that's not him. He said, Hold on. I think this is him. Yeah, it's him. Is he getting out? Here, let's get out. You want to park it? Park next to him or near him. It's weird. Hey, I'm Nick. Yeah, yeah, I'm Nick. Oh, that's my friend. My, I just want like the, yeah. Roman candles. Too many Roman candles. Not too uh, offensive, you know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. Well, you don't want to start the uh, Tet Offensive there. 16 shot happily they got. Wait. You know, that's like bombs over Baghdad shit. I can't give that to you though. This is green heaven. Well, I can't, uh... This is Which industrial one can I have? Grain. This is industrial grain. How much for, let's it's say... like a mega banger. If I wanted all of them. 100 gram cake, I got a 500 gram cake. Oh, this? That I want. I, That'll I know fly around and cool. buzz and light up and all the shit you want to do. I got red and green sparklers. I don't want those. We have, for we have big sparklers. We have. Tell you what. And we, I'm not even using. I'll let you have those. Okay, thank all you. Right. All right. So. What are you guys gonna do with all this stuff anyway? Just uh, not celebrate. A, yeah, we're not even. What do you celebrate? Uh, life. We're just gonna celebrate life. Yeah. Cause I'll tell you something. Something like that. It's like an RPG. That'll take out a tank. I've seen it. We don't need uh, artillery. We're. I've seen it happen. I've seen this melt a face off. And I'm not even talking like thing. a guy who volunteered for stuff. I'm talking about kids. This is just meant to be like a visual we're, expression. Exactly. We're honestly, I'm just trying to. What? To be what? honest. It's supposed to be a what? We're just cele celebrating with fireworks. I'm no, we're not to be honest, I'm a visual expression. Yeah. Of happiness. What is that? That's what this. This is. These are gonna create a visual ambiance. And all right, fellas. Sixteen. Thirty bucks pays for my gas. No, forty-six. Total. All right. Is so that we a $2 need, bill? We yeah, need, these are all $2 bills. I, but we need more like the pit vipers. So. You just said you didn't want that stuff. I said we... Well, it's you, for a visual expression. Do you mind not putting your hand in my car? I'm sorry. I, my, I got my kids' clothes and the toys and stuff in there. I don't want your fingers all over them. Okay, I'm sorry. You have children? Look, what's that in your business? We, well, you you, asked you me about told my me. You made now? it my business. I didn't ask how much, you. How much... Listen, look, can you just have this? not why I told you. Don't grab. You want something, tell me, I'll get it. You go into the store, you reach behind the counter when you want rubbers. Okay. Okay. We're I good. asked you once it. nicely. I'm asking you again. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm not going to ask a third time. Great. Well, then we should. Have a nice evening, John. Take. That dude sucked. But whatever. Why does he have shit people? that he's talking about taking down airplanes? What? Who uses fireworks to take down airplanes? That's true. You're not holding mm -hmm. hands. Yeah. That's what it says. But I've never not held it. Really? <laughs>
That was cool. Humans just have this assumption that humanity is the pinnacle of sophistication and importance on this planet, and it's so shallow. The universe is full of sound, and to think that the human voice is the most important just because we're humans and it's the most relatable is incredibly shallow. What if the only type of photography that existed was of other people? And if someone took these like massive landscape shots and if they were like ridiculed and they're like, well, there's no person in there, what's the point of looking at that? We have photos and videos of everything. Like I can tell you what a rhino looks like. I can draw a rhinoceros. I could back in kindergarten, but I can't tell you what it sounds like. I grew up right down on the beach. On the beach? Yeah. Oh, well. I mean, I, didn't, I wasn't a vagrant. Yeah. Where's Disneyland from here? Southeast. I heard no one's allowed to be pronounced dead in yeah. Disneyland. Yeah. Yeah, when, when anything happens on the premises, and people have died on, on, there. on, the, on the premises of Disneyland or Disney World or whatever, but yeah, they they take the bodies outside of their yeah technical like land ownership to uh, to be pronounced dead. It's pretty fucked up, isn't it? Yeah. But just to like preserve the sanctity of what your bullshit of that. your total total fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I want to be the first person to pronounce dead in Disneyland. My man. We'll get there. I got high hopes for you yet. I wonder what that clown's doing right now, though. I went to my friend Bill's funeral, which was very weird because I thought he had died a year before. He was a really reclusive guy. He didn't have any friends. He didn't have a wife or kids. He just didn't like people. And the only reason we related is because we both loved music and we both used the same type of technology, I guess, while making that music. When I met him, he was around 85 years old, and he lived alone in the same building. He lived upstairs, except he had nothing in his apartment. It was just bare with a, a wooden chair, a computer. As he mentioned, he was a child of the Depression era, so he didn't like wasting money, and instead of buying someone else's rendition of a classical piece he liked. He would just buy the sheet music, which was a, a little bit cheaper, and then he'd transcribe it into MIDI and have the computer play it. One day, I, not one day, I come for like two weeks and he wasn't picking up. And finally, like I asked the, the super where he was, what happened? People downstairs were just like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry he died. He passed away. I'm sorry you didn't know that. Well, he got taken out on, his, on a stretcher, and then the next day a lawyer came to get some of his stuff, and according to them, that means that he was dead. I took that as a concrete statement. 
I was incredibly overwhelmed. And I wrote this eulogy and everything. And turns out, like a few months later, I found out he wasn't dead at all. He basically got transported to some VA hospital and then put into a nursing home, which had I known, it would have been different because he despised nursing homes. He passed away about a year after I thought he had already died. And there was a sign right next to the elevator that said, our dear friend Bill has passed away. The service is tomorrow morning at nine in the morning, three hours away from here. I guess I tweeted that I didn't have a ride to my friend's funeral and Luckily, uh, a cool person from the internet offered and volunteered to drive me. Right here. Is on your right, yeah, 6447 cool. in right 25A. The destination is on. Wow, zero people here. I was the only person there. It was so weird. My initial fear was that I'd show up and I'd be out of place because I wasn't family. I wasn't like an old friend from the war and I'd have to like justify my presence. I got there and there was no one there. Literally, I was the closest person to him, which was very unsettling. Bill knew how much I loved recording, and he was usually a part of that. So I recorded the funeral. When I was contacting funeral homes to, to record, I wasn't attached to any of the deceased, but Bill was such a, uh, an influence and such a big part of my, I guess, musical identity that I don't know, I don't think I was ready to, I guess, prove myself. The silence of that room is, is terrifying and I can't even, it's, it's just such a bummer. I tried to make a song out of the recording. The silence in that room is too intense for me to really listen to, to be honest. I guess it's the most fitting since he is one of the people that I like confided in the most musically. Um, but yeah, 
I guess. And it, it definitely makes it more meaningful. I mean, I, I've used Bill in my recordings before. And in, on Moon Money, a lot of the random patches are him breathing. Now I have him not breathing. When someone asks me what's the weirdest sound I've ever used, that's the first question anyone asks in any interview. What if I told you, took a dead cat, I ripped its intestines out, diligently spread it over a bucket, and then nailed it around the bucket, and then I beat it with a stick. That'd be psychopathic to most people. That's what a drum is, cat guts nailed to a bucket. So I'm the weird one because I throw a beanie baby against the wall and make a snare out of that. The silence in this room can be louder than any drum has ever been in the history of the world.
Outer space is the most comforting thought I have because I like reminding myself we're all just pieces of stars and you make whatever significance you want in life. But if you're searching for something, you're not gonna find it, it's, just, it's stupid. The fact that the solar system is so gigantic and the assumptions that the entire world is human-based and that everything around here was created by a person. The only things we pay attention to are human voices. We're just stuck in a human world. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about sounds in space. Mm -hmm. uh, a sound is, is simply a pressure wave through a medium, and the medium can be anything. I mean, it could be this wooden table, it could be steel, like the tracks of a train, it could be air. And if there is no medium to transmit sound, there is no sound. And is that the case with, uh, like, a sound in the rest of the world, what we perceive as silence, for example, in a quiet room um, below our audible range? If we were to record it and amplify it to, let's say, even a deafeningly loud uh, decibel level, is that, what are we listening to? The sound of silence? Yeah. Yeah, so we have this bias because our human form is all we know. So the bias is that what we see and experience in the world is the world. And this is an extraordinary bias. It's a bias of our own biology, our own five senses. Uh, and all molecules are vibrating. Everything is vibrating. Everything. If it has a temperature, it's vibrating. So for that purpose, if everything's vibrating, in our, on Earth, does that mean everything's making a sound of some sort, even if it's not uh, close to a level we could hear? I think that's fair enough. Keep in mind, if you have an, an audio recording device, you are always listening to the sound after it has moved through air. Of course. So be careful not to confuse the sound you're trying to get with the actual sound of air being air. Or the room, in most cases, if, it, if I have to amplify the volume. Uh, yeah, unless you went into a perfectly Which I anechoic room. Yeah. Uh, going to Pavlov's studies, when he rang his bell to uh, signal his dog, let his dog know that um, there was food out on the table or something, after a while, the dog not only responded psychologically, knowing that there was going to be food, but the dog actually started responding physically, salivating. Mm -hmm. um, that's because the dog had associated the sound of that bell to food. Mm -hmm. I mean, we come across countless sounds in our day-to-day -day lives that we're either consciously or subconsciously attached to. Um, and we link it to a mood or an idea or... All the time. Uh, well, that's all what, the time. That's what music Ex is, well, really. Music is the organized version of that. So, can we harness those associated yes, sounds? Yes, completely. In music? I don't see why not. So, on, I guess, lastly, is there a way we can subtly disguise those associated sounds that we've um, uh, grown accustomed to? I, I don't see why not. I mean, what do you do when you isolate a medicine from an herb? You, the herb has a hundred things you don't want and the one thing you do want if it was shown to be medicinally useful. So you analyze it in the lab, you extract what's useful, you leave out what's not useful, and then you make a pill out of that. You extract what's useful, you leave out what's not useful, and then you make a pill out of that.
think for the first time in my life, I'm looking forward to being, to like growing old. I don't have any obstacles other than my own thoughts now. And I want to capture the beauty of the world because I think a lot of times it's hard to see it. You know, everyone can say, open your eyes, the world is beautiful around you, but they say that and the rest of the time they're just hating their phones, they're hating how long the bus takes to pick them up, they hate their job, they hate all of the time and then they'll just be like, but look around me, it's beautiful. I mean, I'm the same way, but I want to record those beautiful things to remind me so that every time you listen to the music, you hear the beauty.